Welcome back. Today we're flying out the F4E Phantom 2 and this is right now probably one of the best top tiers and I want to explain to you why. First of all, let's just look at this. Doesn't say much about the plane, but it's nice to look at nonetheless. Today I want to start off with some highlights, some general cleanup games just as I talk about this plane and why it's so insanely good. You got four M9Js, which are arguably some of the best missiles in the game. You got the Vulcan, which is quite literally the best gun in the game. You're one of the fastest planes at the entire BR. Yes, you're not the most maneuverable plane, but you're definitely maneuverable enough to get your gun where you want it to go. And if you get this gun where you want it to go, most of the time you will clean someone up. The acceleration, however, is not the best. Sure, it's still a very well accelerating plane, but if you get a MiG-21 BIS, on you within a kilometer and you're not already completely outrunning it uh, you're gonna have a very tough time getting rid of it and the MiG-21 BIS will be your main competition it will be able to stick on you you will be able to outrun it but you need speed and distance to be able to outrun it to begin with it is however one of the most hand-holdy planes in the game and it really just emphasizes the team gameplay that top tier has because on its own against the MiG-21 BIS this thing will probably struggle it will probably lose the problem is well, the thing is, rather, American teams right now are extremely strong. And that's just simply because they're all flying the Phantoms. This thing is fast. This thing can go in and out. The missiles are good. The gun is good. The damage model is good. The only thing this thing lacks is low speed maneuverability. As well as a Doppler radar. And it doesn't need these things. Because it basically has everything going for it in terms of the team game. Easy gun, head on missiles, good missiles together, fast in and out, flares, you can be very aggressive with it because of the turn rate at high speed and the fact that it pulls so much AOA and this just makes it so you can early game, you can clean up half the enemy team and this just made it so that I barely lost any games, I did 45 games and I lost one. I'm flying with a squad, yes. But the flying a 104A and an F2 Sabre, there's not exactly a dead squad going on here. These teams win themselves. Yes, I have been supportive. Yes, so has my entire squad. But these teams are already extremely powerful. And it's just emphasized by the fact that the Phantom is so damn strong with a team. If you have two guys on you that are not good at the game. You're in a 21 bis and they're both an F4Es. Chances are you are simply just going to die. That's just how it is. You can't really do a lot about it. I want to show you some Sparrow kills here. Because even though I really enjoy sparrowing people, especially at range when they don't have RWR. Yes, it's a bit of a war crime, I know. But I just enjoy seeing this, this happen. Are they worth taking? Because they do slow you down quite a bit. Good chunk of top speed. It's about 50 kph if you have all four of them on. Acceleration is a lot worse. Turn rate is a lot worse. Because altogether, four of these will come down to 820 kilograms. Or about 1700 to 1800 pounds. And that's quite a hefty amount the, the, the phantom is a heavy plane i run it with full fuel so it's already heavy to begin with and weighing it down especially with the drag is a little bit of a detriment i just enjoy it too much but i think sparrows for the most part are a little bit of a gimmick if i could only take two i would probably say yeah do it four is a little bit overkill most of the time i just want to get rid of these things i try to get rid of them at the start of the game but sometimes you won't be able to and then you're stuck with these things the entire match and i think most of the times i've died to planes like the 21 bis it was because i still had all four my sparrows on i still had all eight missiles on they do together weigh quite a bit and they really just turn you into a boat so be careful with that Think about if you want to take them or not at high altitude. These things are absolutely insane. If they start tracking because they are a little bit unreliable. Then yeah. I say take them. If they were reliable. If the, the radar never broke lock or something. I would say yeah take them. They're great. But sometimes they just they just don't do what you want them to do. And you can tell the tracking because well they start moving. To whatever direction it has to go to. It goes straight for a little bit. And then after a while they will start leading the target and then you know you have a lock and then you have to maintain the lock and eventually it should hit the target this one was just out of range kind of unfortunate i was uh, looking for a side swipe there but i shot him just a little bit too early and he's flying away from it now making it well being outrun and i'm just going to make sure if it's actually being outrun before i cancel the lock so i press the u key track the missile see it's nowhere no close this guy is decently far away but we're at five kilometers and at medium altitude these missiles go a lot further this this case however i just want to get rid of these things i want to have about one maybe two mid game on me 
And if I just can get rid of one, maybe it hit, maybe it doesn't. If he had turned a little bit, maybe it would have hit. It didn't, no big deal. Go on with a Harrier. He has SRAM, so I want to make sure that I flare in the head on so that missile doesn't pull into me. A lot of targets in front of me, looking who to go for. FGR is pulling, and there's two guys over there. Make sure that the FGR doesn't pull up after me, and he doesn't, so I can go and support my team now. And there's two guys over there, the decently high altitude, but that guy doesn't have RWR, making it so that I can simply lock him, shoot a missile, and if he doesn't see it coming, there go it tracks. He doesn't know where it's coming from. If he doesn't see the diamond, likely he's going to eat that missile. Draw all away from me. I'm completely alone here. I'm going to pitch up. He's locked through the clouds. So I know exactly where he is. There we go. And it tracks. He's going to pull directly in the head on. He sees it last second. Not soon enough. He's too slow. He's too high. And he eats another sparrow in the head on. And this is why I like these things so much. They're so good in the head-on, especially if the enemy doesn't have RWR. I like using these at the start of the game. And as I said like 20 times by now, I want to get rid of these things before the middle to end of the match. They're just that way, they slow you down and they really make it almost a liability. If someone shoots out your radar, which can happen, if they shoot the thing in your nose cone, you can't lock people anymore. And when you can't lock people anymore, you have 800 kilograms of missiles underneath your plane that you can't use. Going on with the BIS, Vulcan doing absolute god work. You hit someone, they're mostly dead. If you hit someone in head-on, I'm using ground target bells that are much, much better than default or air targets, at least in my experience. And if the event arises that you have to kill pillbox, tanks, or anything for that matter, the Vulcan will make short work of it. Unless it's, of course, a bombing target. Or maybe a heavy pillbox. But you don't really see a lot of those. So they're not much of an issue. FGR flying straight here. This is going to be much of a clean up. I'm going to shove a missile right up his ass. And that's going to be it. And that's going to be game. And now for some actual gameplay. Just uh, the average gameplay. F104. We're completely alone on this side of the map. I'm not sure which F104 it is. I'm just trying to get it off. I know it's not going to hit. But I just wanted to shoot it off. I want to get rid of it. Get behind him. If he doesn't move, that's going to hit. But it doesn't track. That's a dud. It just happens sometimes. But we're at a really high altitude now. We're at 6 kilometers. He's climbing. He's not that fast because I'm going 600. And he's not outrunning me by a significant margin. And F104S is simply not going to dodge this missile. He's not going to dodge that missile on the deck with that speed. Let alone at 6 kilometers. He is aim 9 j And we're going to pull out. Because right now we do not want to get swamped. I'm not very fast. The enemy team is slowly creeping in and I just don't want to deal with that. I want to be left alone. A phantom with a team as I said before is so damn strong because you kind of swarm together and I see these teams do that a lot. Phantoms kind of hang together. If you see one expect another two and that's just how these people fly. I'm not sure if this is intentional if it is because people can spot your dot across the map because the phantom radar Makes it so that dots appear at like 35 kilometers, which is also borderline insane. If you spawn in, you can already see the amount of air spawn planes and exactly where they go. Completely still razor skill, but uh, he was fine with it, trust me. <coughs> Hope he doesn't watch this. Missile on the J25, and they're all slow, and at this point I can just dive in. The game is already won, and the fact that I don't have the most interesting gameplay for you today is simply... The Phantom is a very straightforward plane, it's simply made to go fast. But be just aggressive enough with the missile and the gun to win the game early so you don't have to carry. Because carrying versus MiG-21 business is an absolute pain in the ass. But so far I haven't had to do it. The one time I had to carry it was 1v10. And trust me, it doesn't matter what plane you're in at top tier. 1v10 is not winnable unless they actually all let you land. If it's 1v1 every time. But it's just not how it is. These games are over very very quick. There goes the F4F. Almost the same plane as this, but he was not very fast, so I can easily take him down. And if you want to see a video on the F4F, feel free to check that one out. We'll link it in the top right as well as the description. Essentially the same plane, but you like the sparrows and the flares. Dive out of the clouds, have him radar lock, making it so that I know exactly where he is. And we shove another AIM-9J up his ass, and we extend away. And again, this plane is just flown in packs. You want to keep it fast. You want to just zoom around the map and pick out stragglers. You don't want to go straight in. Because if you get multiple people on your six, you're not maneuverable enough to the point where you can reverse someone. You are maneuverable enough that if you get on someone's six, chances are they're not going to reverse you either. 
it's an extremely maneuverable plane when it comes to aiming the gun. Sorry for the freezy, I just tapped out and sometimes it still freezes. I try to fix it while when I tap out it actually keeps going and most of the time it does. Uh, just sometimes it, it does that kind of thing. It's not your, your YouTube, it's me. Shoot an aim9j in, in the head on, he turns away and uh, well, there you go. Merry Christmas. Yes, it's always Christmas, Philip. You know it is. And this game has been freezing a lot, looks like. Maybe this was one of the last games that I did, so maybe something with my settings, we'll have to look into that. But again, look at the team. Because these teams are so strong early game, and when the numbers are up, you can mostly make it so that the enemy doesn't have the numbers to swarm you anymore. Which is great, because getting swarmed in top tier is absolutely the most annoying thing in this game. Unless of course you're in the Phantom and you face like a bunch of F-104Gs or something like that. Not a Chinese one, I mean the ones with AIM-9Bs. Then yes, you're gonna have a field day, and this thing is gonna clean up everything. Luckily, it's a little bit more balanced than that, but... Right now the Phantoms just win almost everything and it's actually kind of boring. When I was flying the MiG-21 BIS, the video that I did previously, I had to do a lot more. I had to do a lot more hard work. You had a Super Soaker as a gun, at least it feels like a squirt gun. It doesn't have any velocity, it does decent damage, but it feels a bit like a shotgun. Whereas this thing is an absolute laser and if anyone goes head on with you, you just kind of look in a general direction. And if they don't pull out, well, they explode. It's, it's relaxing, don't get me wrong. But it feels like this thing is a little bit too easy to use and the fact that it can also go like 1450 clean on the deck now is a little bit of a question mark because it really has a little bit too much going for it. But we're gonna see how it packs out after the TL7 comes out because the MiG-29s are now confirmed. The MiG-29, let's, let's not go there yet. The MiG-23s are now confirmed. We're gonna see what the US is going to get. The leak indicates an F5E which I would personally love but we will see where it's gonna go. We'll see. We'll see if it shifts the balance at all. We don't know where it's going yet. And again, I'm not going to speculate a lot. Because we simply just don't know. It's all just rumors. It's all just clickbait. All those videos on, on YouTube right now are like, Oh, what is Steel 7? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, I, I don't know what it's going to be. So I'm not going to give you an opinion yet. I find it a little bit of a tough playing the cover. Because it's so sleep inducing in terms of gameplay. I like to fly it. Making video is a little bit of a different story, however. Hope it was helpful. And see you all pretty soon again.